you're here. If you're a guest or visitor, please sign your name in the back. We'd love to know that you're here and follow up with you just to send you a hello every now and then. Um, it just looks like there's one announcement. We need a few more people to help with the food pantry distribution this Thursday, April 20th, and next Thursday, April 27th, from 3 to 6 p.m. If you would like to spend a few enjoyable hours helping, please see Big Day Offman after the service today. Thank you. And if that's all the announcements there are, let us prepare our hearts for work as we listen to the prayer. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in body, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ on this second Sunday of Easter. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, and therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan for knowledge of God, and crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up having freedom from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he has not abandoned, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, 
and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let us read Psalm 16 responsibly. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my life is in the body that are in the land, and all those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And the second reading is taken from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you do have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice in an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because you have seen me, you have believed. 
Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I preach this morning in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. <laughs> Amen. Christ is risen indeed, and we continue in our journey, our celebration that our God is not dead. Our God is among the living, and He will show up in our lives when we least expect it, even when we are gripped in fear. Fear of what may happen, fear of what has happened. Fear of what, but what, of what may happen in the days ahead. Regardless of where we are in our journey, Jesus shows up and Jesus gives us a word of peace. Well, I have to commend you. Easter Sunday was wonderful, wasn't it? 182 people right here in the house of the Lord. It was a wonderful, joyous celebration that our God is alive. And I commend you. I challenge you. Bring your neighbors, bring your family, bring your friends. And every service from Monday, Thursday, Good Friday to Easter Sunday, somebody came up to me and said, Pastor, I've done your homework assignment. In fact, the first one on Monday, Thursday kind of threw me off a little bit. He said, Pastor, I did your homework assignment. I said, now remind me what that assignment was in the end. <laughs> I brought my neighbors, I brought my friends. And so, well done, job well done. 182 people, and that is a glorious celebration indeed. But our celebrations don't stop. In fact, our celebrations continue for 40 days into the season of Pentecost, where 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is given, and Jesus gives us the ability to call out to Him as we see in our lesson today, regardless of where we are in our relationship with God, if we are locked behind closed doors like the disciples, or whether we're standing out in the open with the confidence of Jesus. Wherever we are in between, Jesus will show up in your life. And when he does, he always has a message of peace. Three times in our lesson, Jesus says, peace be with you. Now this word peace is indeed a Judaistic welcome or a greeting. Peace, shalom, shabbat, shalat, shalom. Those would be exchanged, those words, in the reading of peace. But in our lesson today, it goes much deeper. There is a sustaining word of peace because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And He embodies for us who He is. Peace. I don't know where you are today. In your relationship with God, maybe you were joining here with us on Easter Sunday and you've come back because you received my challenge as well. I'll just show up. God's doing something. I want to be a part of this. And if that's you, your next step of faith may be today. God, I want to explore the deeper claims of Jesus. And like Thomas, you can bring your doubts here. You can bring your questions here. You can bring your discoveries here. Lord, I want to know more. I want to see more. I want to understand what we celebrate. I want to know the faith. I want to know you, Jesus, more and more. And if that's you today, you are in a great place because this is a perfect place to ask questions. And to say to Jesus what Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, unless I see the nail prints in your hands, and where those nails were in your feet, unless I can put my hand in your side, I'm not going to believe. I can't believe. I've got to be able to see it. Feel it. Know it. You see, in our lesson today, the disciples are behind closed doors, and they're locked away in fear. It's Easter evening. They're away in fear. They're locked in fear. Why? Because what just happened to Jesus, they know will soon happen to them. And we know that to be true. Tradition tells us that all of the disciples were martyred except for one. And we know that Jesus has come and He has come to do the mission that God the Father has sent Him from the very beginning of time. Jesus has come to pay the ultimate price and penalty for our sins and then he gives the great commission to his followers and says now you go i am sending you and jesus says that in our lesson today as the father has sent me 
I am sending you. You see, when we follow Jesus, it is a mission of being commissioned. When we follow Jesus, it is a mission of being commissioned, of being sent out. This is a place for you to be sent out and to share the love of Jesus with every single person that you know. However, reality sets in. And just like the disciples, we may want to do that. We may want to share our faith with others. We may want to go in the power of the Holy Spirit and be open with our faith and share it with those in our workplaces, in the schools. But reality sets in, and if we're honest, we're locked in fear as well. Maybe fear of what is to come. Like the disciples, they saw what happened to their Lord. Crucified, died, and buried. And He told them time and time again, on the third day I will raise to new life and do not leave Jerusalem until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit to go into all the nations and to do the very thing that I've called you to do. A reality sits in. And where are they today? They're behind closed doors. And they are in fear. And Jesus has a sustaining word for them. Verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Say that with me. Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed his hands and his side, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, according to Paul Ekman, there are six core human emotions that we all experience in life. And we see one of them today. We see fear. We see at the very core of these disciples, fear. We have happiness. We have sadness. We see fear, disgust, and surprise, and anger. Out of these six core human emotions that every person will experience in life, we can follow through the understanding of how God made us to be human, to understand the ways in which this divided, conflicted world resounds within the spirit conscience level of every soul, and every one of us, we're going to experience these things. And three out of the six emotions have to do with a trigger of the amygdala part of the brain which cancels out the prefrontal cortex where all the executive function, where you make wise decisions and you can think properly. Have you ever heard someone say, I just can't think right now. I can't make decisions right now. It's because the prefrontal cortex of your brain has shut down. And instead, what's been triggered by these endorphins and serotonin levels just spiking and adrenaline levels going up is the back part of the brain, which is called the amygdala, and this is, where, this is where you are sent into a fight or flight kind of a mode. You know, and this is God ordained. But it's not God ordained for a person to live in this state every moment of their day. You see, fear will cause you to live locked in a room away from everyone else. And my speculation, we don't know about this for sure in the Scriptures, but my speculation is Thomas in his doubts removed himself from the community of faith because he needed to, perhaps as a melancholy in the temperament area of inclusion, he needed to separate himself. The grief was so deep in Thomas's life, he needed to remove himself from the community and just be by himself. Does that describe your life? I just need to be alone to process through the grief. I don't want to be around people right now. Let me be alone, and then maybe I'll come out when I'm ready, and I'll share my grief in the communal sense. My guess is, Thomas, if I were to run the Arnold Profile Report on Thomas to learn of his God-given temperament, he was a melancholy compulsive, which means that he has a compulsive need to be alone. 
And when grief sits in, if you know someone like that, I just need to be alone. Don't fight that. Let them be alone. Give them space. Give them time. Because Jesus is going to deal with them too. Because Jesus comes back a week later and Jesus says, okay, Thomas, if you're doubting, that's okay, but bring your doubts to me. Don't isolate yourself from the community. I know you need this, all right, but your time is over. Now, now put your hands right here, Thomas. Do you need to see it for yourself? Do you need to touch it to believe it? Okay, here you go. Touch and believe. Stop doubting, Thomas, and believe it if that's you. If you're doubting, is this thing real? Is God really real? Is the resurrection of Jesus Christ real? Jesus says to you, come and look. Come and look at my hands. Come and look at my feet. And ten times in those 40 days, we have recorded in the Gospels ten appearances of Jesus to his disciples. And if the Scriptures were to continue to unfold as they do personally as we live out the faith. I believe one of those appearances could be today for you. Because Jesus hasn't designed you to walk in fear. Jesus has made you to live in peace. And I know we look at the reality of the situation. I don't know if I'm going to have a job next week. I don't know if that person is going to actually do anything that's beneficial for the team. Right now, they keep backbiting. They keep doing this, and they have a track record of doing that. I don't know how they're going to respond to this, but I'm going to be a shalom, an agent of peace, and I'm going to show up to work even when the enemy says, you should trepidate in fear. I'm going to show up, and I'm going to offer myself to be a shalom of peace to those around me at the workplace. And wherever you are in your walk with Jesus today, if we're honest to look at the very core soul level, there are fears that we have. Maybe it's fear of death. Maybe it's a fear of your children or your grandchildren. Maybe it's a phobia of some kind that you've never shared with anybody before, but it has really haunted you. And the older you get, the deeper it gets. I don't know what it is for you. But there's a word of peace that can set you free. And here it is. Verse 22. He breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You know, this world is a difficult place to live as we travel through. This isn't our home. And I'm reminded of that every day. And I'll close my sermon with this this morning. I was reading the paper and I saw a little cartoon with the uh, peanuts, Charlie and Lucy. <coughs> Lucy said, you know, Charlie, I just... The more we live in this world, it's so troubled. I just, I just hate the world. I hate people. I just hate everything. And Charlie said, well, wait a minute, Lucy. Didn't you say you have this kind of inner peace? Okay, yes, I do have some inner peace, but I also have outward obnoxiousness. <laughs> and I think that describes the tension that we have living in this troubled world. There's a way to receive the peace of Christ that says, Shalom be with you. And yet you can hear of wars around the world. You can see poor people being overlooked. You can see a government that uses its power and its purposes for its own good. You can see each other devouring one another. And yet you can still be outwardly obnoxious just because of all those things. But inside, inside, shalom. Shalom of God that says all is well with my soul. That gift is for me today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word of peace. Your word of forgiveness is a word of peace. May you give us the office of the keys to forgive sins, to give life, to retain sins. 
And Father, we give you thanks that Jesus appears to us, shows himself to us. And for that one person who needs to have verifiable evidence that you are real, that you rose to new life on the third day, that you are a God who is loving, compassionate, caring, and generous God. Father, I pray that you would show that person this week, today, right now, who you are. Lord, we bring our doubts to you. We bring our concerns to you. We bring our fears to you. And Father, unlock the fear that we may live in your peace. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able as our worship continues.
deacons and trustees, discipleship task force, all our serve teams, our bishop Dan Selva in the NALC, and all people in the call to make disciples. Make him your will among us, dear Father, as we pray for the pastor who you are calling to faithfully lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Your glory is proclaimed in the heavens and throughout the universe. Cause this world, so wounded by sin, suffering, and sorrow, to also praise you. Turn every heart, especially of the rulers of the nations, to seek your will. Bestow the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, so that we might accomplish it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant your healing grace upon all who suffer in body, soul, or spirit, especially those we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Finally, Lord, we entrust those who have died in Christ to now rest in Christ. Grant mercy to all who now rest in your saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We share God's peace from the pulpit side to the lectern side. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we may be seated, and the ushers will be before you.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the God we love, enable us to receive Him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to His through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.